All right, so AMD Agisa 1007B enabled high memory speeds for AM5 platform chips. In the past, I've done various RAM speed comparisons for the X3Ds on both AM4 and AM5. And in general, in Escape from Tarkov, the RAM speed did not affect gaming performance on X3D chips. And I found that capacity was a bigger factor than speed. Recently, there was a new AMD Agisa update, 1007B, that enabled high memory speeds for AMD 7000 chips, whether they're vanilla or X3D. So you do need to run the U clock at 1 to 2 to reach the higher speeds, so that will introduce a little extra latency. However, at 8000 CL36, that's a very low overall latency, so I'm interested to see how it compares to a 6400 CL30 setup. So if you're as interested as I am in finding out the results of this comparison, make sure to stick around. And this is a long video, so take advantage of the timestamps I've included to skip around to the parts that you want to see. Alright, so here are the parameters of my benchmark test. I go into offline mode and set the AI amount to high. And here's what I use for the low settings test. Pretty much everything pulled to the left and set as low as possible. All right, so let's talk about these numbers. As you can see, the 6400 CL30 configuration has the highest numbers, but it seems like they're all in the same ballpark. And, and as an overall experience, it felt pretty much the same across all three. With Tarkov, the FPS max can be a little finicky because let's say I look in a different angle on one run and that happens to not have many assets to load in. Like if I look in the sky in a certain direction, I can really max that FPS out. So I don't really take that as a hard value to go by. It's definitely something that adds to the picture, but not a critical number there. Looking at the CPU stats, temp and usage were pretty much equal, but the 5200 CL46 configuration had a lower SOC voltage and the CPU was running close to 40 watts of power while the other two configurations were closer to 50 watts. So a big difference there even though there wasn't a big difference in performance. Something to note. Over on the GPU side it's kind of the inverse of what we saw on the FPS. The 5200 CL, the 5200 configuration the 5200 configuration had the highest temperature, while the 6400 had the lowest temp and the 8000 configuration was close behind. The 8000 actually pushed the power the most on the GPU. Whoa! 
fondo. Alright, so kicking the graphics up to ultra, move the bottleneck back over more to the GPU side. And it looks like we're pretty limited there. For some reason, the 5200 run went better than the others. But again, we're in the same ballpark here. Tarkov performance can vary from raid to raid because of how much RNG is involved. So I'm just going to chalk that up to Tarkov RNG. I think the performance is equal. I think the performance is equal if we're looking at it from a comparison standpoint. Even though the numbers may vary a little bit, like I said. On the CPU side, pretty much equal on temp and usage. The 5200 configuration is using quite a bit less power, as you can see. And that carried over from the low settings as well. Things to note on the GPU side, the 8000 CL36 configuration was running the GPU 10 degrees hotter than the 5200 configuration and it was using 307 watts compared to 106 and 122 on the other. So a gigantic difference in GPU power and temperature. However, not that much of a difference in performance. So if anyone has any more info on that, please feel free to chime in and join the discussion. Alright, so on factory, there wasn't much to talk about. When I took these configurations to streets, I started to see a bunch of differences here. You can see the 5200 configuration is lagging behind the other two. The 6400 configuration seems to perform the best, while 8000 is a little behind it. So, check those numbers out. The 6400 configuration is leading the 5200 by over 50%, so that's a significant difference. And I was not really expecting to see that, given the results of all the previous RAM testing I've done with the X3Ds, both 5000 and 7000 generations. What's really interesting is that the CPU temp and usage were about equal on all three, while the CPU power was still lower on the 5200. So I didn't really see any stats that stood out to me here. Looking at the 4090 numbers, one system is definitely standing out. The 6400 configuration 
has a higher temp, higher usage, and higher power draw. To me, this is pretty significant because it's able to utilize a little more of the GPU than the other two configs. So kicking up the graphics up to ultra, even things out again, put things back on the GPU, put the bottleneck back to the GPU side. So 60s is about where we were at once all the AI loaded in. And again, I'm using offline mode with the AI amount set to high. So this is an artificial load of AI. Online is gonna be a little different. So just keep that in mind. This is a benchmark test designed to compare performance with closed conditions in order to create consistency where there's a ton of RNG. All right, so I have a lot of live raids if you wanna see online performance, but this is a comparison designed to compare hardware, okay? And this is no different from how any other in-game benchmark is designed in games that do include them. On the CPU side, it's the exact same story on each setting, on each map. Temp and usage are about equal. The 5200 configuration is using about 10 watts less. So looking at the GPU, and then lastly, looking at the GPU stats, GPU temp and usage were about equal. Both the 5200 and 6400 configuration were using about both the 5200 and 6400 configurations were at about 70 watts on the 4090 and the 8000 configuration was at 200 watts. So I'm not sure why it was pushing the clock so much higher on the 8000 configuration. If anybody has more info on that, feel free to share. All right, so a mixed bag of results, not exactly what I was expecting to see. My takeaways are that Tarkov has a ton of RNG. It's only gonna get more and more as the AI gets more complicated as we ask for more and more assets, more and more features, want the AI to be smarter, want more bosses, things like that. From one raid to another on the same computer, on the same settings, the FPS can change pretty drastically. So what I do when I compare Tarkov performance is see what kind of ballpark you get into and there's a certain range that you can be in with different configurations. You're not always going to get the same numbers consistently every time because there's so many variables involved. When heavily CPU bottlenecked on streets, the 6400 CL30 configuration did consistently perform the best. So I'm going to say that's the best configuration. So I'm gonna say that's still the ideal timing to use for this configuration. So if you're wondering if you should get faster RAM, now that the new update is out, I don't think it'll make much of a difference if you're already at 6400 with tight timings. So that's all I got in this one, guys. Hope it was helpful. 
I appreciate all the views, likes, comments. It really means so much to me. My favorite thing to hear is when a viewer has told his or her friends about my page and how there's good info here. That is probably the biggest compliment I can receive in my mind as an INTP creator. So I just want to say thanks to everyone who's shown support to me by viewing my videos, liking my videos, leaving comments, being a part of my Discord, interacting with myself or my community. It has really been a pleasure. It really means a lot to me and helps me in pursuing my dream of making this a full-time thing. So thank you for all the support and I'm going to remember you guys who were with me early on when I get big, alright? So I'll see you in the next one.